Watch this. Helpless. That's how Ada County Commissioner and Health Board member Diana Lachiando felt when protesters showed up at her house last night. She wasn't there, but her kids were, and they were scared. Swastikas stuck and littered throughout Boise's and Frank Memorial, a place meant to highlight the struggle against injustice and oppression, which is obviously still real. Which made us wonder, why is Boise home to the only Anne Frank Memorial in the United States? Well, a traveling exhibit back in the 1990s sparked an idea, one that we use history to make history. Is Idaho too great for hate? The answer to that doesn't seem to be a full-throated yes right now. I mean, that too great for hate ideology is something the community has embraced over the years. But even the Idaho legislature didn't believe in that mantra enough to put those words on a license plate this past session. And vandalism at the Anne Frank Human Rights Memorial this week certainly sends a clear message. I don't know how much clearer someone could be. They placed Nazi swastikas all over the memorial in honor of Holocaust victim Anne Frank. Joe Paris spoke with the Wasmuth Center for Human Rights. He asked him about the attack on the memorial and the tough conversations it is forcing us to have. We are the heart of the city, and this has been a direct attack on that heart. Early Tuesday, nine Nazi swastika stickers were found placed across the Anne Frank Human Rights Memorial in Boise. The memorial belongs to the Wasmuth Center for Human Rights and serves as a place for education and reflection. There becomes a point when too much is too much. Dan Prinzing is the executive director of the Wasmuth Center. He says the specific placement of the stickers is notable. The one that becomes so poignant is the one that is placed right on Ann's diary, right, on, right there on the sketch. That one just hurts. And for us, this has just become such a sad day. The memorial honors the memory, legacy, and wisdom found within the diary of Holocaust victim Anne Frank. Frank penned a diary while in hiding from Nazi persecution as Jewish people across Europe were targeted and executed in concentration camps. The Boise site is the only Anne Frank memorial in the United States, and it served as an educational park designed to engage visitors to think, talk, and respond to human rights issues. Prinzing says it can create tough topics of conversation, like... Who are we as a community? When people have asked, is this who we are? I've always countered that. But now you really begin to question that when such can occur, when such has been emboldened and it doesn't stop, then you have to question it. How do we stand up to hate? Printing says the stickers have a direct and simple message that he's thought a lot about. Proudly proclaiming they are everywhere. They are here. Well, then we do have to question, what is the moral fiber of our community? Where are we at the core? With that said, though, Prinzing knows there is so much good in our community. He says that good and those who are willing to stand up and speak out for what is right cannot be silent any longer. Just as the stickers have said, they're everywhere. Well, yes, good people are everywhere, too. And good people now need to step up and stand up and say, this is wrong. This is not tolerated in our community. We are better than this. Boise Mayor Lauren McLean says it's important to set the example of what the city of Boise really is. It's not okay, but it's on us as a community to continue to demonstrate that this is not who we are by being willing to reckon with our history and to have a frank conversation about our future so that we can be sure to protect what it is that's so special about this place and ensure that the, the things that we love don't change and that we remain the welcoming, open, and connected community that we have shown for decades that we are. After seeing the news, Boise resident Tony Lawson placed flowers in a message where a swastika was placed earlier. She tells me that she is one of the vast majority who chooses love over hate. We're going to have to get louder. It's also telling us for the Wasma Center, our work is not done. That not only is what we do necessary? It's probably never been more important than at this moment. When you hear it, when you see it, don't be silent. Stand up. Obviously, Joe, timing with Hanukkah starting tomorrow at sundown has to be part of this story. But what is the status of the police investigation into this? 
Yeah, Boise Police is investigating the, the placement of those nine swastika stickers. Uh, I'm told by a BPD spokesperson that there is some video surveillance in the area that they are reviewing. They're going through to see if there's any clues from there. Uh, Dan Prinzing from the Wasmuth Center, who we just heard from, he told me that they're going to look into investing, though, into a security system specifically for that Anne Frank Memorial. As we've reported in the past, Brian, this is not the first time that it's been targeted with vandalism. Notably, in 2017, there was somebody that spray-painted swastika because Prinzing tells me this afternoon, though, Brian, that this feels different this time. Yeah, and there's been little moments of those kind of things all the way through this. And we asked this question in the newsroom. We're surprised there wasn't a security system there. But we also have to ask ourselves, why would we need one? But here we are. Thank you, Joe. Well, if you had to pick a, a volume, a level of discorded discourse taking shape in Idaho right now, where would you put it? At least above five, maybe near nine? Well, hopefully our dial goes to 11 because right now it's hitting decibel levels we haven't seen in the gem state in recent memory. This pandemic, which had the potential to show our character, has certainly revealed a lot of peoples in full. Protesters disrupting local businesses over mask requirements. School board members resigning because parents can be, well, let's just say a bit much. Doors broken at the state capitol as activists tried to force their way inside during a special session of the legislature and public health meetings being canceled because some health order objectors decided to take it too far. Madam Chair, Dr. Peterman, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I got a, a, call, a call from the, the mayor and it sounds like the, the police uh, and she is requesting that we stop the meeting at this time because of the intense level of protesters in the parking lot and a concern for uh, police safety and staff safety, as well as the protesters that are at some of our board members' homes right now. So I'm not sure, um, Madam Chair, uh, what we need to do other than I think we do need to, to cancel the meeting. Just an update, I just went out and talked with BB BPD. There's been one person detained, but they indicated that they have the situation under control. Sadly, it's not under control. At, it is not under control at my house, and it's not under control at Diana's house. No, it wasn't under control at Diana's house, as an Ada County Commissioner, Diana Lachiando, who is also a board member of the Central District Health. Last night, at least three people showed up at her house, stood on the sidewalk, and I guess hoped to disrupt her participation in that CDH meeting. They blasted air horns, they banged on buckets, set off their car alarms, even played clips from the movie Scarface, loud enough for the whole neighborhood to hear. All of that was bad enough, but even worse, Lachiando wasn't there. She was at her office in the Ada County Courthouse. Inside her house, though, were her two young boys, alone and scared, which is why she asked to leave the meeting and rush home to her kids. Uh I, I, we're, we're going to take care of you. Can I interrupt you for yeah. just a moment? My 12 year old son is home by himself right now and there are protesters banging outside the door. Okay, I'm going to go home and make sure he's okay. So I will reconnect with you when I get there. I just felt so helpless. No lockdown. I didn't realize at the time. You play rock? Huh? Okay that my mom had taken our dog for a quick walk and actually both my kids were there. I think what Diana needs is a little more horn. So it was my 12 year old and my eight year old um, huddled together in my son's room and they were scared and I felt so helpless and I felt like I, I let them down for not being there. And, um, you know, you decide to run for office and that's a big step to take. It's a huge step and it's scary, but you just never imagine that it's gonna go to this level for your family. You guys, sometimes I admit I feel a little bit aggressive and pissed off. And um, yeah, know, that's, that's how I felt. And I, um, you know, I just worry about my kids like everybody does. I think it's a loss of innocence. You know, I'm uh, I'm a fourth generation Idahoan. I'm born and raised here in Boise, and especially my oldest, you know, went through a period of time when he was um, maybe hearing things on the news or watching, uh, I don't know, TV, and he would be scared about robbers or whatever. And I would always tell him, 
this is a safe place. Boise is a very safe place and you don't have to worry. And um, that loss of innocence, um, not just that you know, maybe it isn't a safe place, but that we're specifically being targeted is scary. You meant no words with this. You held nothing back with this post that you wrote. I kind of want to read a little section that you, you posted. I am sad. I am tired. I fear that in my choosing to hold public office, my family has too often paid the price. Though I was born and raised in Idaho and have chosen to raise my own family here, I increasingly don't recognize this place. There is an ugliness and cruelty in our national rhetoric that is reaching a fevered pitch here at home, and that should worry us all. You still feel that way, I assume, right? I do. Um, you know, in the 90s, we had this really terrible kind of national reputation that didn't really fit all of Idaho. It, it, it fit a small, very small portion of the populace. And I know that it is, this is not representative of who we are as Idaho. If you don't wear a mask, you're going to die. That is not science. But not it increasingly is so loud and so... Um, just dominant and um it's it's just not who we are it's not who i've ever known of my fellow idahoans and no one is excited to have to be considering orders i want people to just do the right thing voluntarily just just do the right thing voluntarily i'm not excited about any of this um but we're we're really stuck in a rock in a hard place here so many of the questions or the comments that i get are about individual health and the mortality rate. And while I'm certainly concerned about any one person's individual um, you know, outcomes or, or health, mm -hmm. what we are concerned about is the hospitals tipping into crisis standards of care. And I don't think people really understand what that means. And it is not good. It is a scoring system that decides who gets treatment or not. And for us to tip into that, and that's something that's reserved for wartime, um, that's unacceptable to me. This was not anywhere near what you guys expected when you got into this. I probably that's the understatement of the year, I'm sure. Yeah, I, uh, you know, septic system permits were the most controversial thing up until about uh, March. So, yeah. and you know, we've taken it on and I'm, I am, I am grateful to be in a position to serve, um, and I'm not afraid of making hard decisions, um, but it has come a, at a big cost to my family, and, um, and I'm just sad about that. It's obviously wearing on you from last night and today. How do you get through? I mean, how, do you, how, do you, how does something like this affect you in the short term or even the long term? Well, I'm, you know, I'm almost out of office, so I've got uh, a few mm. weeks left and I, you know, said I would do my very best right up until the end and I'm going to try. So that's, that's where I'm at. And um, I have the strength of my family and I have my faith and, um, and I'll just do the very best I can. As if this was a one-time incident. Last night was the second time protesters showed up at Laciando's house. They've shown up again today for the third time. Boise police had to show up to escort Laciando out of her house to safety because she was afraid. This is what we've come to at this point. The next scheduled CDH board meeting isn't until next Tuesday, but that could certainly change. No word on the agenda just yet. But Boise police, they did show up to Laciando's house last night. By the time they got there, the protesters were gone. They were only there for about 20 minutes. Laciando's neighbors did sign disturbing the peace citations and Boise police is in the process of getting three arrest warrants for those who showed up at her house. In her post from this morning that we referenced there, Laciando called out the governor for this patchwork of health orders around the state, among other things. She's asking Governor Brad Little to rise to the moment and lead. Do something rather than just say something. We wanted to ask the governor about this, but we were told he wasn't available today. He has a press conference scheduled for tomorrow. And I know there are some of you out there saying we aren't covering both sides of this story. What about what the protesters were protesting? Believe me when I say there are not two sides to showing up to cause alarm at an elected official or a volunteer board member's house. There's not. And those protesters outside the CDH building during the meeting, well, they were given a lot of leeway. 
They could have been trespassed off the property, but they weren't. All of this, all of what has happened over the last several months in Idaho, in Boise in the last week, in the last 24 hours, has been a lot. A lot of negativity, a lot of people scared, a lot of people worried about where we're going from here. The bad news is getting headlines right now. We know this. But it's also worth knowing the good. It's worth remembering, like what replaced the reprehensible stickers left at the Anne Frank Memorial last night or Tuesday night, or today I should say, the good and those who promote it. Like it says, we are everywhere and we choose love. Forty-nine hundred miles from where she hid in an attic from the Nazis sits the only Anne Frank Memorial in the U.S. Why Boise? For that answer, we have to go back almost three decades. Do you have a question you can't seem to answer? Or maybe just a curiosity that has left you wondering? Whatever's on your mind, text it in. 208-321-5614. Include your name in the hashtag the 208. And stick around. We're going to try to answer some of them at the end of the show. All right, earlier, we heard from Dan Prinzing with the Wasserman Center for Human Rights. The Wasserman Center, founded in 1996 for the purpose of constructing a memorial to human rights. That vision became a reality when the Idaho Anne Frank Human Rights Memorial opened to the public in 2002. Kim Fields gives us a look back. The Idaho Anne Frank Human Rights Memorial in downtown Boise is the only memorial of its kind in the United States. The world-class educational park opened in 2002 with hundreds of Idahoans attending the dedication, including longtime human rights leader Marilyn Schuler. Human rights are a hard, hard one. We still have a lot of work to do, and I hope that this is a site where some of that work goes on. The memorial was truly a labor of love. It took seven years of planning and contributions from thousands of Idahoans. But the idea to build a permanent memorial to offset Idaho's negative image as a place of intolerance and hatred was finally a reality. The words and the life story of Anne Frank were, for many of us, like a gateway to connect with a whole spectrum of human rights issues and concerns. Since its opening in 2002, the memorial has welcomed hundreds of thousands of visitors and students to better understand the human rights challenges our communities, our country, and our world face today. At the heart of the memorial, the life-size bronze statue of Anne Frank, a bouquet of flowers and messages of hope left at her statue today. She is cast as pulling back an imaginary curtain and gazing out a window from the family's attic hiding place in Amsterdam, her diary held in her hand. School children from all over Idaho washed cars, sold candy, and collected pennies and quarters to pay for the $40,000 statue. How everyone has the right to live no matter what their 
their religion or their ethnic background. Both the triumphs and tragedies of the human story are on display here. In every quote and every idea, visitors see the profound power of a single voice or bold action to overcome great odds and alter the course of history. As Anne Frank famously wrote, in spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. Really kind of need to believe that these days. Well, part of the Wasmuth Center's work is to provide educational programs and resources both at the memorial and offsite in classrooms and communities throughout Idaho. Online, they reach national and international audiences in the hopes that we must never forget. This past legislative session, Senator Shree Buckner Webb sponsored a bill to create a new specialty license plate that would read, Too Great for Hate. Proceeds would benefit the Wasmuth Center. The bill passed in the Idaho Senate, but failed in the House. Some lawmakers said Idaho had too many specialty plates already, even though earlier in the session, the House voted to approve a Choose Life specialty plate. All right, since the beginning of this month, we've been asking you to send us your wildest, your weirdest Christmas tree, Christmas tree decorations and your ornaments as well. We also want to see all the places you've been finding your elf on the shelf hiding. But today's submission just may take the cake for the best ornament of the year. Why? I don't know, just because. Take a look at it. Kara Boyd of Meridian texted us this picture of her ornament. It's a dumpster and it's appropriately on fire. It reads 2020, the year of the dumpster fire. Wow, I don't know if there's been a more accurate description or a more perfect ornament that sums up the year we have had so far. Now well, there's always that toilet paper ornament, right? But you get the point. And just a reminder, we'd love to see your wild and weird holiday ornaments and decorations. Christmas, Hanukkah, which starts tomorrow, by the way. Kwanzaa, whatever you want to celebrate, let's see how you celebrate. You can connect with us and share your photos through our Facebook group. You can find us on Twitter, on Instagram, even through email. 
and you can always text them to us 208-321-5614. And no matter where you post them, make sure to include your name and tell us where you're from. All right, let's get to your comments here as we wrap up the 208 for this Wednesday. Question sent in. So if a mob of people outside my house disturbing the peace and harassing me, they won't be arrested by BPD. Is there any response or explanation for BT BPD? And yes, as we mentioned, there are three arrest warrants issued right now or about to be. They're looking into getting those arrest warrants and issuing them and arresting those people that showed up outside of La Chiando's house. So we'll let you know when that happens. I grew up here. My parents are born, raised and passed away in Boise. I moved back to Boise because I thought California had too many crazies. Well, the reality seems to show lately there are more in our small state, which is sad. I choose love, says Becky right there with you, Becky. I agree. A lot of people do too. Why doesn't CDH just do a Zoom meeting? Well, they do, but they also have to allow people to be there because it is a public meeting. Some are in the building, some are at home on Zoom, which is what Diana Lachiando was. She was at her office on Zoom, but they have to let it known. Let it be known when the meeting is because it is a public meeting. Has anyone looked into a correlation between Idaho's investment in education? and the large groups of these protesters. Both would appear lacking critical thought. That's a good point. 